again, just uh, briefly after the Pledge of Allegiance, let's have a, a short moment of silence for those impacted by the tragedy in, in Florida. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. American. I'll just say that. It's great to be back in the United States of America. Welcome to our June 13th meeting of the Board of County Commissioners. My name is Shelley Bueller and I have the pleasure and honor of serving as the chair of the commission. Good morning, Commissioner Archer. Good, Good morning, morning, Commissioner Kirk. Welcome back. Thank Good you. Back. Good morning. Madam Clerk, the first item, please. First item is item three, consent agenda. Are there questions on the consent agenda? I would move for approval of the consent agenda as presented. And I'll second. Thank you. Motion by Commissioner Cook, second by Commissioner Archer. All those in favor say aye. Anyone opposed? Motion carries three to zero. Item four, new business A, County Clerk number one, consider all voucher payments. Uh, Madam Chair, this morning we have one voucher report dated June 10th, 2016. Total amount $322,684.41. <laughs> The most significant item in the vouchers was health insurance cost of $122,000. I've reviewed the vouchers. Uh, questions have been answered, and I'll make a motion to approve the vouchers as presented. Thank you. Motion by Commissioner Archer. Second. Second by Commissioner Cook. All in favor say aye. Anyone opposed? Motion carries 3 to 0. Item A2, consider correction orders. And I'll move approval. Second. Second by Commissioner Archer. All in favor say aye. Anyone opposed? Motion carries three to zero. Item B, Planning Department number one, consider approval of resolution number 2016-43, amending the district zoning classification from Residential Reserve District, <coughs> RR1, to Planned Unit Development District on property located at 1700 Southeast Tecumseh Road for the purpose of converting a house to an office. And at this time, we'll open the public hearing. Good morning, Commissioners Barry Beagle, Shawnee County Planning Department. Is anyone here? <coughs> Sorry, right. What is before you is a request initiated by uh, Iona J. Doty to re uh, request a reclassification of property at 1700 Southeast Tecumseh Road from <coughs> RR1 Residential Reserve District, Planned Unit Development District and intended exclusively for residential land use. Subject property comprises 1.24 acres. The reason for the request of reclassification is to convert the existing dwelling occupying the property, which is about 1,660 square feet in, in size, to uh, an office use, so as to accommodate the sale of the property to um, uh, Ben Kramer and uh, his company, Kramer Consulting, uh, for occupancy as, as an office use. This request did appear before the Planning Commission on May 9th, and as a result of extended discussion, it ended up resulting in a split vote of four to three. There was considerable discussion by the Planning Commission with regard to uh, this reclassification and its appropriateness within the context of this specific area. Uh, I will note that the applicant contends that the subject property has been on the market for sale for over a year, and as a result of the parcel's small size, comprising 1.24 acres and location adjacent to the Kansas Turnpike, it has affected its uh, saleability, and therefore it needs to be reconsidered for marketing for some other type of use. The Planning Commission had extended debate with regard to that specific question, and they noted the, frus the frustration of the fact that we don't have any guidance in the form of a land use plan currently within the unincorporated area by which to make decisions about how we accommodate business uses within the unincorporated area. A portion of the uh, commission, however, did not feel that despite the absence of a land use plan that we could hold that against um, this property owner or anybody else, 
as we go through the process of developing the comprehensive plan and resulting regulations designed to implement that on the back end. There were, uh, there were other members of the commission who were in the minority who felt that this request constituted spot zone. It was inappropriate uh, in this particular area based on the character. In other words, that this area is not one that is forecast for office land use. There is no office land use within any proximity of this specific location, and it is also not at a point of transition between higher and lower intensity uses for which an office use would serve as an appropriate transitional buffer. Needless to say that as a result of all this discussion and trying to figure out the best place for this, it ended up resulting in a split vote of four to three by the, uh, by the planning commission with the majority uh, favoring uh, its reclassification to the PUD district. I will note uh, that uh, protest petitions were filed subsequent to the public hearing. The, uh, the result of the protest petition amounted to 49% of the required land area for notification. And since it exceeds 20%, it will require the unanimous vote of the county commission to approve uh, this request. So that's a very condensed uh, version of all this. So I'll be happy to answer any questions you may have. Thank you very Are there questions from the commission at this time? Not at this time. No. Thank you, Barry. Thank you. I'll open it up to anyone wanting to speak in favor of this proposal, and then I'll also give that opportunity to those opposed as well. Good morning, commissioners. My name is Ben Kramer. I'm with Kramer Consulting. I reside at 2335 Southeast Tecumseh Road, which, which is just within a half a mile of this uh, subject property. Uh, the subject property of the PUD, like Barry said, has been on the market. He's noted for one year. It's actually been vacant for two years. It was vacant in June of uh, 2014, or since June of 2014. Uh, with the expansion of the turnpike in 1998, there, there was a home just south of the subject property that was taken by right-of-way. And there was right-of-way taken off of southeast Tecumseh Road, which this aerial doesn't show that, but there is additional right-of-way to match this taken off of Tecumseh Road, which left the property at the 1.24 acres um, and at the 50-foot setback from the road right-of-way and then 43 from the uh, Kansas Turnpike. A realty company had been uh, shown the property, many potential buyers, but no one has offered to purchase a home. And it's possibly due to the, uh, the uh, small amount of land, the 1.24 acres, and the safety concerns that come from the close proximity to the highway. Uh, the property is not desirable as a rural residential property. Homeowners are looking for a typical three-acre tract. The property is unable to maintain its current value under the current zoning, and thus brings the need for the change in use of this property. I first approached the owners in November of 2015 to purchase the property as an office. Uh, they wanted to continue to try to market the property and sell it as a residential structure. Uh, in April of this year, I reapproached them and uh, made an offer and so after not being able to sell a property at over 20 percent less than the shawnee county appraised value uh, they accepted my offer contingent upon the approval of the pud a little bit about our business in 19 or excuse me in 2012 i obtained a home occupation permit for operating kramer consulting llc from my residence my father also has a home occupation permit for the same purpose. To my knowledge, there have been no complaints about our business operating from our homes. Kramer Consulting does not generate a lot of traffic. Occasionally a client will come to the office, but we often visit the clients on site, and the operation of our business from our home has not had a detrimental impact on the neighborhood. We believe that the operation of an engineering firm at the subject property will not be detrimental to the neighborhood. <coughs> there will be no change in the basic operation of the business at the subject location. If someone was to drive by this location after we move in, they probably would not realize that it was a business operation. Our business will not change the character of the neighborhood. I've talked with some of the surrounding neighbors 
and they have expressed that there is no issue, that they had no issue with the proposal, and they were glad we were purchasing the property. They didn't, they didn't like seeing the property set vacant and were encouraged that we would improve its appearance. One mentioned having someone occupy the property during the daytime might be detrimental to criminal activity in the area. The subject property is covered with thick wooded area. There are trees to the north and the east of the structure which provide a buffer between the adjacent landowners and this property. We plan to install a security system, replant the yard, and do landscaping. We will have no large signs or intrusive lighting. We're not planning to change the look of the property except to improve its appearance. The county has voted in favor of three previous PUDs, an auto body shop, an engine rebuild shop, and a concrete construction company. Each are adjacent to residential zoning. To my knowledge, they have existed without incident and have not been detrimental or not had a detrimental effect on their neighborhood. Our use is less intense than those previously approved. Despite the opposition of the Planning Commission, as Barry said, they voted in favor of this proposal. So we bring this proposal to you in hopes that we can gain your approval and we thank you for your consideration. I'd be glad to answer any questions you have. Thank you, Mr. Kramer. Any questions at this time? No. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Anyone else in favor? And those opposed? Anyone wanting to speak can speak at this time. Just please make sure to tell us your name. My name is Ken Erdl, and I reside at 4865 Southeast 10th Street, which is uh, uh, shown right here on the, on the map. Uh, our objection and the objection of the people that signed the protest position is that this is really a, a spot zoning type of request. There's no commercial zoning within uh, two miles of this particular location. Uh, our concern is that there's a large amount of vacant land. Uh, that could conceivably use this uh, particular zoning request as a precedent to develop, especially to the uh, west of this property. You can see there's a large field uh, that's owned by Gary Gilbert. Uh, uh, he's an elderly gentleman. If he passes away, there's you know the likelihood that that's going to be developed in some other way other than farming possibility. Um, the planning commission uh, indicated that uh, they felt hog-tied or, or hamstrung by the fact that there isn't any comprehensive use plan for the, the county. If you look at other counties in Kansas, such as Douglas County or Johnson County, a, a request like this wouldn't even be considered because they have their whole area planned out where things are going to go. Uh, generally, you put commercial zoning along major right-of-ways, uh, such as, in this case, maybe 6th Street or Croco Road. Uh, there is existing commercial along Croco Road. Tecumseh is really a secondary road. There's not a, a large amount of traffic on it other than the neighborhood and, and uh, school buses and that type of thing. Uh, generally, commercial is followed by some sort of buffer zone, such as multifamily or something like that, to separate it from res residential. There's nothing in this case to separate that, uh, that particular use from, from the existing residential. Um, our concern is that somewhere along the line uh, that there's going to be additional commercial activity in this area that's really primarily a residential uh, area and uh, uh, that it would be uh, this particular zoning request would be used as a precedent to say, okay, well, we reserve, we uh, uh, approve commercial zoning in this location. Why not do it across the street? We could wind up with a truck stop or something that really does detrimental to the area, you know, across the street. We're somebody in the future try to develop that and it was approved by the, the commission. Uh, the applicants have stated that the property has been on the market for two years or has been tried to be sold for two years. It has been vacant for two years since the last owners died. But as of last fall, when my neighbor inquired as to the, co the price that they wanted for the property, he was not offered a price to sell it. Uh, they did uh, list it with a real estate company. It was uh, shown, I think, one time for an open house. Uh, it has not been aggressively marketed. Uh, basically, any residential property is, is 
will sell at the right price. You know, at this price, at this point, they're asking $90,000 for this property, which is built in the 60s and is, you know, not up to current standards. It's a berm home. It's not a, not a popular style of home anymore. Uh, but still, the fact that it cannot be sold at the price that they want for residential shouldn't be a determining factor as to whether or not this is a, a appropriate zoning request. The county commission, or excuse me, the, the planning, planning commission asked the question, you know, has there been any other activity of sales along uh, this, this area that would indicate that the turnpike is a detriment? And I did some research on that. Actually, if you look at 4720 Southeast uh, uh, 21st Street, which is shown in the map about right there, that's actually shown as being vacant right now, but actually in 2004 there was a house built at that location, <coughs> and a new house. And as you can see, they have access to the turnpike. They have the, the noise from the turnpike. Uh, so, I mean, that's, that's not a detrimental factor in that particular case. A uh, lot of the residents along 21st Street are longtime residents, but there were two other houses that had been sold since the turnpike was expanded. 4720 was 2004, 4726 uh, was sold in 2010, and again in 2013. Uh, 4348 Southeast 21st was sold in 2000, 2005, and 2009. So there's been activity for residential along the turnpike there. So, you know, the, the idea that this particular property isn't marketable as residential at the right price is just not, not correct in my mind. So we ask that you turn this uh, zoning request down just on the basis that this is a, a spot zoning request. It's going to be detrimental to the neighborhood. It's going to be used as a precedent, precedent in the future to... Uh, develop other commercial on, in an area that really isn't suitable commercial. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Other questions at this time? Thanks again. Anyone else who is opposed? My name is Richard Walnick. <coughs> I live and own the property that adjoins just to the east of this property. Uh, I think Mr. Ertle covered most everything, but what what we're really concerned about is this is a residential area. It's got nothing to do. There isn't any businesses of any kind for at least a mile or more. Uh, I have talked to some of the neighbors, and I have been informed that five of them have turned in petitions against this. That kind of shows that we definitely do not want it in the area. It just seems like uh, the majority of homeowners in that area should dictate what ha what they have to live with and not the wishes of just some individual company doing whatever they want to. So we'd really appreciate your help in putting a stop to this so it can stay residential like it's been for years. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Okay. Commissioners? Madam Chair. Commissioner Cook. As a point of disclosure, we act as a uh, semi quasi judicial, judicial board, <laughs> if I can get that out. Um, I did have an opportunity to meet with Mr. Kramer before today's presentation. I had Mr. Eckert present with me, so just as a disclosure of uh, communication with Mr. Kramer. I did meet with him and heard his uh, explanation as to what he wants to do with the property. So as far as disclosure of any ex parte communications, Commissioner Archer, do you have any? Um, no, I have not. I read the planning commission meetings right. uh, several times, right. actually. Right. <laughs> I, I did have discussion with uh, Christy McKenzie, who's a planning commission member, so that would be my disclosure at this time. Commissioners, your pleasure. What do you, what would you like to do? I I do not see any reason why we we could not defer this for one week. Um, in order, I would like to consult with our uh, legal counsel uh, a bit more. Um, so I would make a motion to close the public hearing at this time and defer until next Monday, the twentieth. I'll second that motion. It's a motion by Commissioner Bueller. Second by Commissioner Archer. Discussion? 
All those in favor say aye. Anyone opposed? Motion carries three to zero. So just to be clear, we're going to defer for one week till our meeting on Monday the 20th at nine o'clock. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Item C, Health Agency, number one, considered authorization and execution of contract C-181-2016 with the Southeast Kansas Education Service Center, allowing the health agency to access categorical aid from the health Department of Education through the, through the Southeast Kansas Education Service Center, which for, functions for special education purposes uh, as a school district and allows the health agency to provide in-home nursing services to developmentally delayed infants and toddlers from birth to age three for fiscal year 2016 through 2017. Good morning, Commissioners. Diane Creek, Local Health Department. Good morning. This is a contract between the health agency and Greenbush, which allows us to provide nursing services with, in conjunction with TARC for developmentally delayed infants and, and children up to age three. And there's no cost to the county. It's part. It's a half of an FTE. It's 0.5 FTEs nurse that does this work. I'd be glad to answer any questions. Thanks, Diane. Other questions? Move to approve the contract. Second. There's a motion to approve by Commissioner Archer and second by Commissioner Cook. All in favor say aye. <coughs> Anyone opposed? Motion carries three to zero. Item C2, considered authorization and execution of contract C-182-2016 with the Kansas Department of Children and Families and the United Way of Greater Topeka, accepting the terms and conditions of a grant award in the amount of $3,196,576 I'm sorry, three million one hundred ninety-six thousand five hundred seventy-six dollars for the Capital Area Successful Start, uh, Capital Area Su Successful Start Collaboration. Oh, page two. <laughs> for the page, for the two. Sorry, I did. for the term of J January 2nd, 2016 through June 30th, 2017, and contract C-182A and 2016 with the uh, Child Care Aware of Eastern Kansas for a business associate, as a business associate. Well, hopefully I can explain that. <laughs> um, this, this is something new. We haven't ever had to do this before. I'm not sure. They said that it's been done before, but I don't know how it's been done because I've never seen this. Um, but basically, United Way gets the contract, the grant with child care or with um, the children's cabinet. Okay. And DCF is the fiscal agent for, for that whole process. And so United Way manages the whole grant, and then there's eight subcontractors, which we are one of them. So there's eight partners from community agencies in Topeka. So like TARC and Kansas Children's Service League, parents as teachers, we're all part of that. And so now they're asking us for a tax clearance form, which we don't have to provide since we're, we're uh, why don't we have to provide that? Hold on a second. Because we're a tax exempt. And so they're also asking for a debarment form, which we, we did that, <coughs> the debarment memo. So that's basically what this is. It's, and then all the paperwork that comes with this is all the regulations and all the guidelines to doing the grant, um, like um, what happens if there's no money and, you know, the rules that come with the grant, which United Way manages all that. I'd be happy to answer questions if I can. Madam Chair? Yes. Yes. All right. <laughs> so the money goes to United Way. United yes. Way is administering the $3,196,576. Yes. Mm -hmm. And we have eight people working with United Way for this program. Yes. Yes. What's Shawnee County's role? And how much is Shawnee County spending of that $3 million? Shawnee County gets about, the health department gets about 180000 which provides match to Medicaid match, um, dollar for dollar match. Um, our role is we provide home visitation. So this funds the Nurse Family Partnership Program. Mm -hmm. And so we provide home visitation to high risk moms and their babies when they're pregnant and after up until age two the babies so 
if we receive 180,000 with a match, we're really <laughs> talking about $360,000 for in-home care for high-risk families. Yes. And, exactly. Uh, and tax dollars are this is not tax dollars being spent on it. No. And it's being supported by the program. Yes. Yes. Exactly. That's Thank you. Manager. Further questions? I'll move approval of the contract. Is second. There a second. Second by Commissioner Cook. All in favor say aye. Anyone opposed? Motion carries three to zero. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Item C3, consider authorization and execution of contract C183-2016 with the Kansas Department of Health and Environment, who will provide $2,000 to help control tuberculosis in Shawnee County. Good morning, Commissioners. Linda Oaks from the Health Agency. This uh, contract is actually a renewal. We have had this for several years. This uh, $2,000 helps us provide uh, direct observational therapy for our active tuberculosis clients, skin testing for contacts of that person, case management, x-rays, labs, and um, other needs as that. We also can provide um, some support if we need to have an active, a person with active tuberculosis in isolation for a short time. And I'd be happy to answer any questions. Thanks, Linda. Questions or a motion? Motion to approve. Motion to approve by Commissioner Cook. Second. Second by Commissioner Archer. All in favor say aye. Anyone opposed? Motion carries three to zero. Item C4, consider authorization and execution of contract C184-2016 with Pulmonary and Sleep Associates for professional medical and health care consultation services for tuberculosis patients seen in the communicable disease clinic at a cost of $150 per hour plus $250 per month. Good morning, Commissioner Linda Oaks from the Health Agency again. This contract is again a renewal. This uh, provides us with support from Dr. Leeds from Pulmonary and Sleep Associates for our active tuberculosis patients and our uh, patients with tuberculosis infection. So he does evaluations, writes orders for medication, and provides us with um, assessments and consultation. And I'd, again, I'd be happy to answer any questions. Thanks, Linda. I'll move approval of the contract. Is there a second? Oh, second. second. Uh, what is, what's the client size that, that are serviced with? Uh, um, the client size during the last year, um, I'm, I don't have the exact number. We've had about two active tuberculosis patients and then probably, I would say, 20 to 30 patients with tuberculosis infection. So th it's been fairly small in the past year. Um, but it only takes one active case person with tuberculosis and then we have to do an investigation and see everyone that they have had in contact with so it can become large very quickly. There's a motion by Commissioner Bueller, second by Commissioner Archer. All in favor say aye. Anyone opposed? Motion carries three to zero. Thank you. Item C5, consider authorization and execution of contract C185-2016 with P BKD LLP for cons preparation of the cost report for the year end December 31st, 2015 with an anticipated cost of $27,040. Good morning, Commissioners. Alice Weingartner, Health Agency. Um, this is an annual report that is required of the Federally Qualified Health Center. Um, it is due, um, they usually are due at the end of May, but because of some changes to the cost reports um, format, this report is now due in June. Um, so we are asking for approval for this particular contract. I will also say that there will be um, a request that will come forward at a later date for a cost report to be completed to cover the months of January through June of 2016. Um, we're going to have some <coughs> conversations with the company um, that we use to prepare this to see if it's something that can be done earlier. Um, so we'll keep you posted on that as well. I'd be happy to answer any other questions. Thank you, Alice. Other questions? Just uh, if I may, uh, Madam Chair, the January through June report will be sort of a wrap-up uh, to hand off to Ned, uh, Grace Ned, is that correct? Um, it, yes, but this report will actually go straight to HRSA. It will not go to Grace Med. All this does is reflect the closing out of the grant as far as the county's responsibilities. Okay. okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Further questions or a motion? I'll move to approve the contract. Motion to approve by Commissioner Archer, second by Commissioner Cook. All in favor say aye. Anyone opposed? Motion carries three to zero. Thank, Thank you. you. 
Item D, Public Works Solid Waste. Number one, consider approval of request to issue a request for qualifications for professional, professional design services for the Southeast 29th Street Bridge over Deer Creek Project. Good morning, Commissioners. Tom Block with Public Works and Solid Waste. <coughs> this is the Public Works item, and this request is essentially just to uh, issue a request for proposals from uh, interested uh, design firms to begin um, design for the replacement of the bridge that is now currently located on Southeast 29th Street at, over Deer Creek, which is at the basically the intersection of Southeast 29th and West Edge Road to the uh, northwest, essentially, of the Lake Shawnee Dam. Um, we anticipate the design cost of this to be paid for out of sales tax from the current sales tax uh, program with construction costs then to be paid for out of the sales tax revenues from the uh, the program that will begin in 2017. Mm -hmm. So again, um, this again, there's no cost associated with just going out for RFPs. It's just to uh, find interesting mm -hmm. firms, make a selection, and then proceed from there. If there's any questions, I'd be happy to try to answer them. Thanks, Tom. Other questions? Yes, Commissioner. Okay. Tom, this bridge, this is the bridge that is um, on the what would be the northwest corner of the lake area. Correct. And uh, this bridge is somewhat, I mean, this has some historical significance with it being a WPA bridge. Yeah, it was built in 1937, you're right. And so when we send out requests for qualifications to our, are we trying to maintain historical qualities like we've done on other bridges, or do we look for just the best design, period? On this particular bridge, we would look to having it look as near as it looks today. So we would try to, try to accomplish that. And then are we also making accommodations recognizing that at some point we might expand 29th Street from a two-lane road to a four or five-lane road? Yes, this bridge, we would we would go into it looking at making it a five-lane bridge. So yes, we would widen it. Uh, in preparation of 29th Street being widened from two to five lanes all the way from currently, it, it goes, California, I believe it's, I believe it's four or five lanes right now until you get to like the Turnpike Bridge. And at that point, it becomes two lanes. We anticipate it will be five lanes all the way out to Broco in the future. So we would make accommodations for it to be five lane uh, when we replace this bridge. Do we have a time frame for we're looking at that expansion of 29th Street? Or I don't remember seeing it on our expansion of the sales tax. No, projects. it did not end up getting included in the uh, sales tax expansion. Um, so I, 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 do not, I do not know exactly when we were looking at that widening 29th Street at this point. And I mean, I just know that we periodically get requests about 29th Street, the traffic flow on 29th mm -hmm. Street. Mm -hmm. Also, as a as pedestrian traffic from Aquarian Acres um, to Lake Shawnee and trying to see how we might accommodate all of those factors. And mm -hmm. just so the public knows that we are very much aware of mm -hmm. the flow and traffic and pedestrians and trying to find a solution for all of that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yes, you're right. <laughs> we have had many discussions. <laughs> Regarding that that issue, All right. okay. thank you. Thank you. Fair motion. I would move to approve the request for qualifications. Great. Submission by Commissioner Cook. Second. Second by Commissioner Archer. All in favor, say aye. Anyone opposed? Motion carries. Three to zero. Thank you. Thanks, Tom. <coughs> Item E, Parks and Recreation. Number one, consider authorization and execution of contract C186-2016, addendum to contract C168-2016 with Jenny Litzy to pro uh, provide additional marketing brochures at a cost of $50 per hour, not to exceed $2,500 for the additional brochures. Morning, Mike McLaughlin, Shawnee County Parks and Recreation. What we're asking to do is develop two to three additional brochures that look like this Lake Shawnee brochures. They uh, promote and market our marquee uh, locations. Uh, we would like to add one for Gage Park, which has a lot in it, and as well as some partners. Uh, our three garden areas we would like to add, and possibly a trails brochure. This would be contained within the cost that you've already approved for production of the guide because the guide comes in several hundred dollars under the allotted amount each time. So we're not really asking for money beyond what we've already done. We're just asking to be able to use the same designer to do a level of design that's higher than what we're capable of in-house. Questions? We have to approve the guide, Frank. I'll second, but just so I'm clear, um, Mike, would the trails guide be like a map that people would 
see, and so they would ha have a map of all the trails of Shawnee County. Is that what we're anticipating? Yes, right now Lee Allen of the GIS department is working on updating the map for us. Mm -hmm. We've got a front and back trail guide done that lists all the trails but doesn't have the map in it. What we'll do is one that folds out and in the middle you'll see the map. I think that would be very helpful. Mm -hmm. So, again, second for the motion. There's a motion by Commissioner Archer, second by Commissioner Cook. Um, the only thing I guess I would say is, is I know these are paper guides, correct? Uh -huh. So as far as applications um, on I know the state of Kansas already has, i um, trying to think of the name of it, they have an app where it has many layers of trails. Um, is that it's, something? It's something we would like to do in the future, but it'll come with a new website eventually when we redesign the website. Okay. Okay. Because theirs is pretty extensive at the time. I, I mean, there's quite a it's, bit of information. Is it Get Outdoors Kansas? There we go. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And they are a partner with us, so we may even link to their site. Okay. Okay. All those in favor say aye. Anyone opposed? Motion carries. Raise your hand. Item E2, consider authorization and execution of contract C187-2016 with Harvester's Community Food Network for a summer, summer meals program for children at various Shawnee County parks. Good morning, Commissioner. Sean Osborne, Parks Plus Recreation. Um, this is a service partnership that we have in the past that we've done with Harvesters and um, kind of a win situation for the community with the kids that might not get a meal in the summertime. Um, if you have any detailed questions, I do have Rachel Meyer that has worked closely with them to uh, coordinate this throughout our park and stuff. So I'd be happy to answer any questions you might have. How many different sites do we have then for uh, meals? She's, she's got the detailed part, okay. sorry. <laughs> Good morning, Rachel Meyer, Partnership Development Coordinator with Parks and Rec. Um, we actually currently are just contracting this for Gage Park. Okay. Um, all children in Shawnee County are welcome to come to the meet and meal. Um, it's at 1130 every morning, Monday through Friday, south of the mini train. Okay. And they actually have been partnering with the Millennium Cafe, which is inside the, the library. And so they're creating the meals. They bring them to the site okay. and the children are welcome to attend. So I, as just my knowledge of Harvesters has many sites throughout the community. I mean, there's a lot that I believe the library has one. Yes. Uh, but this is one that Shawnee County Parks and Rec yes. is sponsoring. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. I'll move approval of the contract. Is there a second? Second. Second. Oops, second by Commissioner Archer. All in favor say aye. Anyone opposed? Motion carries three to zero. Thank you. Thank you. Item E3, consider authorization and execution of contract C188-2016, addendum contract C116-2016 with Unlimited Construction, Inc., uh, Dinkle Construction 2, for an additional inch of concrete depth and fiber material up to 1,180 feet portion, or 80-foot portion of the perimeter trail at the Shawnee County, Shawnee North Community Park that is currently under construction at an additional cost of $19,470. Good morning, Commissioner. Terry Bertles, Parks and Recreation. Uh, I have before you a change order to a contract with Dinkle Unlimited Construction Incorporated Dinkle Construction 2. A uh, change order would be the 1180 foot portion of the perimeter trail that's under construction at Shawnee North Community Park. The change is to allow us to have a one inch additional depth and some fiber added to the concrete material uh, for additional support in an area that we anticipate having uh, truck traffic going back and forth across the trail. So we're, we're trying to preemptively, post preemptively uh, fix a problem that, uh, of, of cracking and, and disrepair to the trail. Uh, we did not anticipate this at the beginning of the contract. It came up as we went through the process. Uh, the, the trail is going to be funded through uh, Land and Water Conservation Fund grant and our, that district one of the Parkland Acquisition Development Fee Fund, so that it's 100% covered through grants for the fund. We're asking for your approval for this change order. Thanks, Terry. Other questions? Commissioner Cook? The part of the trail that's affected by this has not already been constructed. We're not carrying anything out to reconstruct it. Correct. No, it's turf right now. It's, it's adjacent to the soccer fields up there, and it's just a simple matter of maintenance trucks that go back and forth to maintain that soccer field. Trying to prevent that. Very good. 
I would move for approval of the change order. Just motion by Commissioner Cook. Second. Second by Commissioner Archer. All in favor say aye. Anyone opposed? Motion carries. Three to Thank you, Commissioner. Thanks. Item F, corrections. Number one, consider authorization and execution of contract C-189-2016 with Forensic Truth Analysis, LLC, for provision of polygraph examination to candidates for employment with the agency at a cost of $150 per examination. Good morning, Commissioner. Brian, excuse me, Brian Cole, Department of Corrections. Uh, this has been a long-standing uh, agreement and contract that we've had with this uh, agency regarding to provide polygraph testing for the Department of Corrections. Prior to 2003, we did not have polygraph uh, testing, and when I was the uh, head of the, uh, uh, the hiring retention in 2003, and in doing research that we found that uh, this was one of the elements that we did not have in our uh, hiring process that we found very valuable in other law enforcement and correctional agencies. So we went out, and at that time I did extensive research uh, throughout the region, basically from Wichita West to Kansas City East, and we, the best price we were able to get was with uh, forensic truth analysis. Uh, at that time, they were giving us uh, the polygraphs for $100 each, which was extremely good. Um, most of the agencies that we looked at in the area were asking three to $400, and a lot of that would be three or $400, I mean, you'll pay me extra to come from Wichita to uh, Topeka to do it, or you'll send your applicants to Kansas City or Wichita uh, to reduce the cost. And to be honest with you, I had troubles enough hiring people without having to uh, ask them to spend a lot more gas money to drive somewhere for maybe about an hour or two for a test. Uh, I'm not saying that the uh, services they would have provided would have been bad or by any means, but uh, or worse. But uh, we found that this is a very trusted uh, um, company. This is a retired law enforcement officer here in our local uh, a uh, area. This is a local company that we value and trust. Um, and one of the things that th this contract has had is just it's been a contract that will just stay in existence unless there's a change. At this time, with the additional staff um, and technology and things like that going on, he decided it was time that he had to raise his prices. I completely understood and was surprised it hadn't been before now. Um, we do have the money to uh, in the budget to be able to stand this, and it is very valuable to our uh, hiring and to, keep, to maintain the, the quality and integrity of staff that we have. So um, I would be happy to answer any questions you have. Thank you, Brian. Other questions or a motion? Move to approve. It's a motion by Commissioner Archer. Second. Second by Commissioner Cook. All in favor say aye. Anyone opposed? Motion carries three to zero. Thank you. Thanks, Brian. Item G, Commission number one, cons uh, consider reappointment of Hal Gardner to the Riverfront Authority Board for a three-year term expiring May 8, 2019. Commissioner Cook. Commissioners, thank you. Mr. Gardner's done a great job on the Riverfront Authority, uh, brings a wealth of knowledge as a owner of a shop in Noto. And so I would ask that he be reapproved for his service on the Riverfront Authority. And that's a motion. Motion by Commissioner Cook. I'll gladly second and thank Hal for his service. Exactly. Me as well. All those in favor say aye. Anyone opposed? Motion carries three to zero. Item five, administrative communications. Race to uh, Commissioner Tom Block with Public Works and Salt Lake. Just something real quick. Um, just to let you know that that uh, mail and overlay project on South Pickle Boulevard from 49th to 57th. So I'll let you know that was completed this last week. So if you haven't had a chance to go out and take a look at it, uh, we were pretty pleased with how it turned out. So just want to let you know. All right, thank you. Item six, Give one to Eric too, Jeff. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning, Commissioners. Jeff Shaba on the Kansas Expo Center. Uh, first of all, I want to say we had a great weekend uh, with Impact Volleyball. Uh, their attendance, or actually the participants, have increased with the special Coaches Day. Um, we're even looking to expand it to another day next year. So it went very well over the weekend. I just handed you out the flyer for our first third Thursday program um, this Thursday, June 16th, with Matt's Hot Dog Cookout, which is going to benefit 
the Healthy Hands Humane Society. I encourage you to come out and enjoy. It's uh, not only important for a community event, but also to showcase the Kansas Expo Center uh, to the national industry. So thank you very much. Okay. Looking forward to it. Thank you. Anyone else for administrative communications? <coughs> Uh, very briefly, Barry Beagle, Shawnee County Planning Department. As you know, we are getting underway with regard to our comprehensive planning efforts. Um, now that the commission has appointed the 22-member steering committee, we have made contact with each member. We've given them background information. Um, the first meeting will be on June 28th, and that will be our kind of like introduction as to the process and going through what is to be expected. We will be defining a, a project logo, which will be a thematic element that will tie everything together. We'll also be identifying stakeholders that we want to engage throughout this process as well. Uh, last week, as one of the first steps in the process, we had a department head tour for the benefit of Tom, Thomas Dow, the uh, project manager with RDG Consulting, and uh, I think it was it, it turned out really well. We covered a lot of territory uh, throughout the, the unincorporated area. Again, we are looking forward to the same opportunity with each member of the county commission this Friday, and uh, therefore the. Uh, Thomas really wants to, to understand from your perspective those areas and, uh, you know, that you want to feature or highlight within the unincorporated areas. This is your tour uh, for, you, for that time. So uh, if you could let me know what your thoughts are with regard to that, I'll put together a tour route map and so we can be efficient in, in getting around. So we're conducting three tours that, that day, so we'll be quite busy in, in getting around. Uh, the last thing is, is that shortly there will also be a website that is <laughs> will be set up and dedicated to this comprehensive planning process. We want to keep the public aware of this uh, process, uh, get them educated as to what comprehensive plan is all about and how they can become engaged uh, throughout this process. And so when the website gets up, we'll, I'll come back up and share that information with you as well. But anyway, I just want to give you that quick update. Great. Thank you, Ben. Anyone else for administrative communications? Commissioner Cook? I would just comment, uh, Tom talked about the Nolan Overlay on South Topeka Boulevard, and uh, I had an opportunity to travel that early on Saturday morning on the way to the Military Appreciation at the National Guard Museum. And you can tell when you move from the city to the county, um, and uh, I look forward to maybe the city working to rebuild the rest of our entranceway into Topeka. And uh, that's all I heard. Thank you. Mr. Archer? Uh, yeah, that's not the only road uh, <laughs> <laughs> that you can tell. But anyway, be that as it may. Uh, I hope we get some publicity on the third Thursday event uh, through the Capital Journal and through WIBW. I know that uh, they, they promote uh, First Friday Art Walk, NOTO, uh, the Food Truck Festival that we had, German Fest, and I hope they will publicize this event because it's going to be the first of many good events at the Expo Center for our community. So that's it. Thank you, Thank Madam you. Chair. Well, and uh, while I was gone, it was great to see the news about uh, finally hearing uh, about Grace Med mm -hmm. and our transition. Yes. That was very welcomed. Um, and Wi-Fi was spotty at best on my trip, so I did attempt to uh, call in, but uh, it was unsuccessful. So I do appreciate uh, Commissioner Archer for you filling in as chair. Uh, very much. It was a wonderful trip, but I'm, I'm really glad to be back. So <laughs> thank you both. Okay. No place like home. Yep, that's exactly right. Next item, please. Item six, executive session. There is a need for an executive session for a period not to exceed 20 minutes for purposes of non-elected personnel uh, and for consultation with our attorney. And that is a motion for 20 minutes. I'll second that. Motion by Commissioner Bueller, second by Commissioner Archer. All those in favor say aye. Anyone opposed? Motion carries three to zero and it's for 20 minutes. We are back in session, no action required, and we are adjourned. Hey, how are you?